Hey everybody, it's Melicia, and I'm here with our Dean Willow Bay. Thank you so much for sitting down with me today. Absolutely, Melissa. We're going to talk about Hollywood's biggest night. Okay, and I could see you're dressed to talk about Hollywood's yes, biggest night. Yes, we're all a little dressed glimmery today. gold. Yes, you looked gorgeous last night, Thank by you. the way, but we'll get to fashion a little okay. bit later on. First, we have to talk about Frances McDormand. Yes, the shout out. Yes. The shout out to our very own Stacey Smith's work. Yes. Calling it, she called it, Stacey called it an equity writer, but Frances McDormand shouted out diversity writer. Right. And if you are familiar with the work of Stacey Smith here at Annenberg, you know that Stacey has pointed out three as she calls them, simple steps mm -hmm. that the industry can take in order to increase um, representation of women and people of color. Right. And one of those simple steps is an inclusion writer or right. a diversity writer. Right, so when she made that statement, and then she had all of the nominees stand up, all of the women nominees. That was an incredible moment. What was the moment. energy like in that room? I know as a woman, it was thrilling and empowering for you, but what were you thinking? What were you feeling? Well, first about? I have to say that the, the her, um, when she called it the diversity writer, it sounded like writer. Right, and I there was a the bit of thing. confusion. Like, and yeah. I had to say, you know, that is not Stacy's yeah. work. It's <laughs> and yeah. Oh, right, right. So, but then you have this glorious moment where she pulls up all of the women nominees, and I have yeah. to say that. Dionne von Furstenberg a couple years ago started this beautiful tradition of having a lunch uh -huh. for the women nominees and it's closed to the press. It's just meant to celebrate them. So I got the chance to be with all of them yeah. earlier in the week. So for me there were all these familiar faces in, in the room and to be um, singling them out mm -hmm. and having them stand and share in this moment was an extraordinary special, an yeah. extraordinarily special end. Yeah, it was definitely a highlight, and it's about time, right? It's about time that these women are recognized for their talents and their crafts. But let's head back a little bit to the beginning of the ceremony. Jimmy Kimmel opened yeah. mentioning Bob Iger when he stated that Black Panther is one of the positive moments of this year for African Americans and Bob Iger. For moviegoers. For moviegoers. Black Panther is a joy for it moviegoers, is awesome, period. Awesome, awesome movie. I enjoyed it myself. I just saw it last week. But how important is it to Bob to have inclusion and diversity in his films? or in Disney's film. Well, also remember, um, it's hugely important for mm -hmm. the Walt Disney Company because it reflects the audience and it reflects the world that we live in today. And you have to remember also Coco. Right, Coco um, was great Coco well. winning two Oscars. Mm -hmm. And if that that is a movie that um, champions our humanity yeah. in a truly cross-cultural way, right? Celebrating the, the heritage um, and traditions of Mexico, but it's really mm -hmm. deeply about our common humanity and our yeah. respect for our elders and our right. traditions. Right. What I loved about Coco, I didn't really understand Day of the Dead before, mm -hmm. but the fact that it's like, it's looked at as, as a celebration now, you know, like Christmas and Thanksgiving, celebrating our ancestors, you know, it's just a great tradition. And it makes you want to learn more about these cultures through these films. Yep, you know? and, and here's an interesting story about Coco, which is people thought it wasn't going to do well in uh, internationally, really? and in, particularly in China. Like, what do they know about, about Mexico and the culture of Mexico? It has gone through the roof in China because it taps wow. into their cultural traditions um, and appreciation of their ancestors right. and the intergenerational relationships that transcend transcend the life of uh, the land of the living. Right, and that's what I love about film too. It shows a common thread. We all are going to mm -hmm. have people that pass away in our lives, you know, and films can show that we're all alike, you know, at the end of the day. We may have different cultures and different ways of doing things, but we're very similar at the end of the yep, day. Yep, agree. So being a journalist, what is a story that you would have written this morning that would have been the headline on the newspaper or on the TV from last night. Okay, so there, here's one that I would not have written. I was a little dismayed this morning okay. to find in my inbox a Hollywood Reporter story, um, and it was just a fashion and photo piece. Um, mm -hmm. Hollywood executives and their, and their dates in parentheses. And okay, I thought, let's see, this will be a diverse group. There'll be women executives, men executives, maybe gay executives, yeah. a whole combination. Wrong. I had to click through. 15 images wow. until I hit the first female executive, 15 and 16. Uh, Donna Langley was in, in the 16th um, spot. And I was really dismayed by, first of all, a headline that seems a little tone deaf, mm -hmm. but then an arrangement of photographs that no rhyme or reason, it was in alphabetical order. Yeah. Um, we could have easily highlighted um, actually the female talent in the industry, but mm -hmm. uh, you could also argue, wow, if that 
it, that isn't an illustration right there of why we need inclusion writers. <laughs> right, exactly. <laughs> writers and writers. Right, literally um, writers. There you go. <laughs> yeah, so that's actually great. It seems like we've made so many steps forward, but it's still a little work to do. Yeah. And one of the things I thought was really interesting last night was Jimmy had a really, really, really difficult Mm -hmm. um, you know, path that he had to navigate. He did a great job. He did a though, great yeah. job. I mean, he's he is phenomenal at doing that. And I was actually talking um, to Dawn Hudson, who's the who's the head of the academy, and she was saying she was just fascinated watching him work because yeah. he tweaked and tweaked and tweaked and throughout the entire week tightened and changed. And I think you really see that in mm -hmm. his performance. So for me, it speaks to the value of how much you have to practice yeah. and work on your craft to do these things. But I thought he really struck the right tone of this is a cultural moment that has to be recognized. Um, but it's also it's also a celebration and an yes, awards show. Yes. And to put too heavy a burden on what should be a celebration and an awards show mm -hmm. to carry our cultural weight um, it, it is a tough assignment. Yeah, that's exactly what I thought at home. I felt like he set the tone for the entire award show. It was positive, it was uplifting, but it also was a lot of political moments mm -hmm. that we needed to have. Mm -hmm. So what was the difference between, you're not new at the Oscars. No. You've seen it pretty often. <laughs> what was the difference between- I'm not new at much. Right? <laughs> this year's Oscars and last year's Oscars, was there like a clear difference or any previous Oscars? Every year is different. Mm -hmm. And the, the mood in the room is different than what, it's very different seeing it on TV. There are some years where it's fabulous on TV and dead in the room, and yeah. then other years where like the room was phenomenal. Like the year Hugh Jackman did it, like the room was so exciting and different. Mm -hmm. People on TV were like, oh, that was okay. Um, yeah. So I would say this year the energy was good. I wasn't sure going in because of how fraught um, the, the environment is right now, but the energy was very, you know, people wanted Jimmy to do well because mm -hmm. he's so well liked, and they, I think they were kind of curious and there was a sense of kind of being feeling a little expectant as okay how is this going to how is this going to roll out yeah. but strong energy and and I think positive energy in the room it was definitely positive. I felt that through the screen. You did? I did. I did. So let's get to the fun part. Fashion. Okay. Yep. In 2015, mm -hmm. you made headlines with the Rodart Star Wars dress. Yep. Which was gorgeous. It was daring, but gorgeous. Uh -huh. And this year, you had on the ivory gown with yep. your hair pulled back in a ponytail. I've never seen you with a ponytail, <laughs> but you look beautiful. Thank you. What inspired that look? Um, I wanted to do something a little bit different. Okay. Um, I usually wear J.C. Obando, who's an L.A. designer who I love, and mm -hmm. I was like, ah, I need to mix it up a little. I was feeling a little gidgety. Mm -hmm. um, but I wanted, also wanted something classic, but not so serious. Mm -hmm. And once I uh, discovered that we were not wearing black uh, to the Oscars, because there was, I have to admit, there was a little bit of one of those, like, wake up in the middle of the night and think, I don't want to be the one getting out of the limo in my white dress <laughs> right. um, when everybody else is in black. Um, I just thought it was nice and clean and fresh mm -hmm. and simple. It was. It was beautiful. So before we end it, let's wrap it up a little bit. Um, so you know what was interesting? I thought, um, I thought the women looked fantastic, uh -huh. and men looked fantastic, but I actually thought fashion took a backstage. It did. And you could feel it, right? Yeah. Which is a funny thing to be able to feel. But you could mm. feel it like people looked awesome and they were great dresses. Yeah. But there was more purpose and less preening. Mm. And that, that, it was subtle, but you could really tell the difference. Yeah, Hollywood is evolving. And you could definitely see that. I know with... Um, Lupita, she looked gorgeous, but as well as Viola Davis in her hot pink. You know, oh, everybody had simple but pop colors. Some people were just elegant with a little V. So mm -hmm. it was it was simple, but like you said, the message. Jen Garner, right? Oh, she might have been my favorite in person. I love Jennifer. Really, she she looked really good in, in person. person? Ooh, yeah. That blue. I didn't know she was presenting, and I said, "Please tell me you're presenting because you look like yeah. you need to be on that stage." Yeah. yeah. So I totally agree with you saying that the looks and everything kind of took a backseat and the message and what people had to say was way more important. Mm -hmm. So speaking of that, um, a lot of stars last night mentioned when they were growing up, they wanted to be on the screen. They mentioned their dreams. Mm -hmm. You know, when you were a young girl, did you ever think you would be sitting at the Oscars? <laughs> Definitely not. Really? Although I did want to be a reporter when, <laughs> when I was young. Mm -hmm. uh, but no, I had no idea that I would be sitting, like who would ever think they would be sitting at the Oscars unless you want to be an actress? Yeah. Um, so no, not at all. And you know, people say to me a lot, you've been going like how many, 20 years or whatever it is, and you know, is it, does it get old? And I have to say it doesn't. 
I mean, it's a work event, um, but it is still the most special, I think, event mm -hmm. of the year, certainly the most special event in Hollywood. Yeah. Well, I'm so glad you were able to share that moment with us and your experience. Thanks for having me. Thank you for coming.